how do you implement a stock screen that identifies companies with an economic moat? You may have tried to implement a growth or a value stock screen. Those are relatively easy. But if you want to capture those companies that have a competitive advantage over a long period of time, it's much harder to capture through a stock screen. Let's take a step back and talk about the definition of an economic moat. An economic moat is a competitive advantage that prevents other companies from replicating a particular company's success. It enables sustainable value creation. You can identify some of the attributes of an economic moat because an economic moat is related to a competitive advantage. And companies that have this advantage tend to have returns on invested capital that are higher than WAC, which is the weighted average cost of capital. They also tend to have a higher economic moat than competitors. But calculating a company's economic moat is very subjective, and it's not something you can easily incorporate into a stock screen. So what I'd like to do is go through Capital IQ and show you how you can create an advanced screen based on a relative competitive advantage that is going to allow you to identify stocks that tend to have economic moats. So let's take a look at Capital IQ. So I'm going to start with the Capital IQ website. Again, I'm navigating to CapitalIQ.com using a web browser, and I'm going to go to the screening tab, which is up here at the top. Um, I'm going to start with an equity screen that uh, has some basic screening criteria, and I'll just go to Save Screens and pull up one I've got here, a stock screen. And what, I'm, what my goal is is to show you how to identify companies with a sustainable competitive advantage. And in doing so, I've got this basic screen already built, but I want to go back to the screen builder and show you a really important part of this. What we'd like to do is identify the intercompany ranking. In other words, across companies, how well is this company doing? That's indicative of a competitive advantage because you're comparing this company's financial performance to another company. So let's take a look at the criteria under here. You, you have lots of options here under key financials, but what I'd like to focus in on is the CIQ operating metrics and ratios. And we can take a look at the profitability and margins associated with this. One thing that you can take a look at is the return on capital. Remember, companies with high economic moats tend to have a return on invested capital higher than the WAC. You won't actually be able to compare it directly to the weighted average cost of capital because that's not something, WAC is not something you typically find in the screen. It involves the subjective uh, measurement of the expected return on a stock. So you don't find that in a lot of stock screens. But what you can do is assume that companies within a particular industry have the same WAC. So what you can try and do is find companies that have returns on invested capital or returns on capital that are higher than the industry average. For example, here what you can do is identify those that are in the top decile. And in other words, what it's doing is it's finding stocks. Um, and what you can do is actually compare it to uh, the particular industry or the index or the primary industry. And so what this is going to do is it's going to compare a company to other companies in its industry and identify those in the top decile for return on capital, which is indicative of some type of competitive advantage. You don't know whether it's a cost advantage or some economies of scale or scope, or it's got intangible assets that somehow protect it from competition. But that return is telling you there's something there. And what we're doing is saying, let's find those stocks that have a higher relative return. So we could add that criteria in. And it's working right now. It gets it down to 66. I mean, that is that is a huge screen right there. I mean, it is really reducing down the numbers. The other thing you can look at is a gross margin for a company. And again, I encourage you to play around with this and come up with your own particular uh, approach to this. But you could compare the gross margin 
to companies in its industry and identify companies that have high gross margins relative to other companies in the industry. You can do it on the last 12 months or the last annual year or the last quarter. There are lots of ways to do this, but you know this is this is a, a really valuable way to identify a competitive advantage. And so this is going to reduce it down quite a bit. I'm just showing you two of these. There's certainly many other ways. You could look at earnings from continuing operations as a percent net income, normalized net income. You could look at growth rates. Um, just a lot of options here. So this intercompany uh, rankings and looking at the CIQ operating metrics and ratios, I think is really valuable. So let's look at some of the results associated with this. So let's take a look at some of these companies that it identified. Um, you've got uh, a number of companies here. You may be familiar with some of these. Most of these I actually am not familiar with because they tend to be smaller companies. But let me pick one of them and we'll drill down into it. Um, trying to find one that is less unusual. But I will pick Dolby Labs. And this company has a high gross margin. That was one of the things that I included in the screen. How can we check on this? Let's verify this information. I'm going to go to Quick Comps. And I'm going to go to Operating Statistics. And what this does is it pulls up competitors to uh, Dolby Labs. This ticker symbol is DLB here. And you can compare the gross margin for this company relative to companies that Capital IQ considers to be its peers. And I don't know how accurate these are. In fact, some of them I'm looking at, like Pandora, I don't think it's a good competitor. They may both be loosely in the uh, music business, but I think Dolby Labs is a much different company than Pandora. Here you can see that Dolby Labs has a crazy high gross margin, 89.1%. I mean, that is uh, drool worthy in some sense. I mean, companies would love to have a gross margin that high. What is a gross margin? You're comparing that revenue to the cost of goods sold. And here, what you've got is a really high profit margin, probably because they're licensing their technology. It's 89.1%. That's higher than many of these, right? I mean, here you see 52%, 40, 37, 27, not as high as this one, but it's higher than most of these. So this did a good job of screening relative to companies um, that are likely to be peers. And that's indicative of an economic moat. Likely for Dolby Labs, they've just got this intangible asset that allows them to uh, you know, generate very high profit margins. And looking at the company description, that makes sense. They develop and license audio technology. So I suspect that they've got lots of intangible asset assets. Their uh, cost of goods sold is very low, and they're generating lots of profits relative to the assets. So um, I think Dolby Labs does have a very uh, high economic moat. Now, what you're trying to do is identify companies that trade at a cheap price relative to this economic moat. And that may be more challenging to identify, but you've got to keep this in mind. Um, you don't want to pay too high of a price for an economic moat. So what I've done is I've tried to identify a way to include a competitive advantage into a stock screen. And you do that by doing an intercompany comparison. And I encourage you to check out those CIQ operating metrics and ratios in order to implement this.